here talking about this because how wonderful it is to have this real-time feedback about what it was like to experience me and my hard power and all these things we're going to be diving into it um but here's my partner michael oops okay still going okay here's my partner michael <laughs> he's going to be Hello. interviewing me today essentially Hello, I'm Michael. You got breakfast on your lips. <laughs> breakfast is still, still serving. Uh, yeah, we're gonna be we're gonna be speaking to Tamina together uh, about her experience and journey from hard power, search for love, <laughs> and then through to soft power. And exploring what that what that looked like for Tamina, mm. how she discovered what these things were. Mm. Yeah, beautiful. Mm. Yes. Yeah, I'm very excited to talk about this with you, Tamina, because well, I guess I met you during your transition. You definitely did, and actually, you helped me with my transition. Like. I remember distinctly the moment where I started to see a new possibility of being in relationship that I hadn't ever experienced before. It was like, I remember it was a moment we were in the car and you asked me a question and I remember seeing how I would have answered that question as past hard power to Mina. And I, and I remembered seeing like a ceiling like open up and, and me taking stairs through that ceiling and seeing this new possibility of answering the question. Mm. And I would describe that as like me being authentic and actually answering the question like, like truthfully from my heart instead of this idea of what I thought maybe you wanted to hear or what I thought needed to be said for the moment. Like I allowed myself to actually let the moment touch me and answer honestly. <laughs> hmm. Sounds like quite an opening of the sky moment, yeah. I remember it. It felt good, it felt good, but uh, I, I would love to start together by uh, by going a little earlier in your journey to even before we met, because I know when we met, you had already been walking this journey for some time. Mm. And what has always been a curiosity for me is like, what what did your life look like when you were in your hard power? Like from an outside, even from an outside perspective, what was going on in your life? Because I didn't know you then. <laughs> Such a broad question. Um, the first thing that comes to mind is that I had a lot of makeup. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had a lot of makeup. I feel like most of my life was, um, my energy was directed to covering my imperfections. It was about buying the makeup I needed to cover the scars on my body. It was about being in appointments to like make sure my hair was on point. It was about making sure my eyebrows were right. Like I feel like I spent all of my life and all of my time at various appointments trying to have my outer surface perfect and pristine. I felt like all of my energy was focused on everything that you could see. Because I was worried about what you could see on the outside. Um, so imagine now that translated into relationships. All my energy was focused on what could you see? What could you see of me? And how can I anticipate what you might see so that you don't see it? <laughs> mm. 
because if you see it, I'm exposed and I couldn't have that. It was too, um, too risky for me to be, to be seen in a potentially unfavorable light. Couldn't deal with that. Mm. It felt very threatening for me and uncomfortable for me. So I would spend all of my time and energy trying to avoid that uncomfortability. And literally you asked my mom, all my friends back in those days, like how, what's Tamina always doing? She's running from appointment to appointment. And it's funny, like I'm really seeing this even right now as we're talking of like, yeah, my life was about running from appointment to appointment to take care of my surface layers to take care of everything out here that you might be able to see. Hmm. Yeah, that's really interesting. I never saw that. I never saw that, Tamina. <laughs> <laughs> Even makeup is like, you wore makeup? <laughs> <laughs> I used to wear makeup every day. I remember <laughs> the time when like, this makeup artist was like, your skin's perfect. Why do you even wear makeup? And I, I was like, it is. I didn't even know. I was just wearing makeup because that's what you do over your skin. It didn't, it didn't, it took me until it took me getting acne to realize what wearing makeup actually was for <laughs> to, <laughs> to cover things up. Um, but then obviously I, I, I stopped wearing makeup because, uh, you know, my acne moment was like a call from within being like, girl, you cannot hide anymore. Like, I'm going to give you something so like unavoidable that you cannot even hide me, even if you darn well try. Yeah. 11, 11. <laughs> 11, 11. Yeah, that sounds like quite the, quite the like awakening experience or force, forcing you to face your face face yourself experience mm -hmm. yeah we all start somewhere with some event i think um the other part i'm curious about back then when i didn't know you and didn't experience you is is what was your experience with with men like mm -hmm. in your hard power very the word like calculated and premeditated <laughs> come to mind <laughs> very stressful very um really hot or really cold and i want to like go further into this there was always this sense of like the moment would happen and then i'd be replaying of like what did that mean what does that, what does that mean? It just, it was me creating these like loops of trying to almost like break down the experience of being with somebody into like different storylines that my mind could try to make sense of. <laughs> hmm. And in that process, I felt like I was never truly inside of any of the relationships because I was always trying to figure out like, what does that mean? Do they like me? Do they not like me? Where is this going? You know, how serious is this? You know, when is the appropriate time to take this next step in the relationship? Like I was always trying to plan what was what was next and what everything meant. and. Based on those answers, I would then create a plan of like, okay, that means I can show up this way. That means I'm allowed to do this thing now because they've done this step. <laughs> so it was, it was very pre-planned. There was never a like just letting, letting go and being inside of the moment or being inside of the relationship and letting it show us. It was always about taking each action and saying, okay, this is what this means. This is what we do next. He did this thing. Okay, so then that means I do this. Um, 
And it was always really stressful for me because then I was really ignoring all of my emotional experience. You know, like there'd be times when like, you know, say he wouldn't text me back or whatever the thing is, I would just like blow up, be screaming and be bawling on the, on the floor, like at, by myself, obviously. No one could see that. But there would be such a, um, a um, overflow of like repressed emotions that would just like blow up. And sometimes that blow up would be towards, you know, the person, but it would never be me crying. It would be me really being upset for something that they weren't doing. You know, I would blame them. Like they weren't doing that thing. Um, it really wasn't, it wasn't about them. It was really about, you know, what I wasn't allowing within myself to be present in the relationship as it was happening. And uh, that wasn't happening because I was meticulously mapping out the relationship. I was in my hard power. I was trying to direct the relationship. I was trying to anticipate it, create a container for it, uh, instead of being within it, instead of being inside of it. Mm. Yeah, I hear like all the analysis that was happening, the mind playing and figuring out and putting things in sequential orders yeah yeah that sounds it does sound stressful hard to be with hard to be in as yourself yeah so can you give us an example of like what a sequence might might have looked like like what were you not what were you waiting for in, a, in order to like you know i don't know touch the other person's hand for the first time or or something like that. Hmm. Was does that land? Is, was that something that you would like hold off doing? I think the biggest story of holding anything off would be having sex, like the appropriate timing to have sex with somebody. Hmm. That one was a huge one, because like all of the stories of like wifey material or you know the good girl or like the the real woman waits xyz amount of time before sleeping with this person otherwise you are labeled a hoe or you know a uh, one time it's not a consistent relationship material um so that timing for me was always very stressful because there would be that part of me inside that really wanted to move forward that way in the relationship but then the other side of wondering like, are you gonna look at me funny later? Are you gonna call me later? You know, what's this gonna mean later? So there was always that like friction within the relationship itself from actually like going into this free flow, like exchange of nourishing love um, because there was always that question in my back of my mind of should I be doing this? Hmm. Should I? not trusting I. <laughs> so you're always trying to find the right time when you were like allowed in the proper sequence, the proper timing to have sex. Especially the first. The first time. Yes. You mean it happened even after the first time? Um, after the first time, there was other things that came into mind. After the first time, it was things like, am I prepared? Like, did I bathe? Did you brush your teeth? It became other surface, other surface um, mm. variables that were determining the timing for my actions. So again, it was being a voyeur, being an external, on the external of a relationship, timing everything out, looking at the facts, external factors rather than actually being inside of it. Hmm. So first you were analyzing when you were allowed to have sex and then what that meant. And then every time thereafter, it was, have we done the necessary preparations for this? For <laughs> Are you all cleaned up right? Yes. Um, 
sounds ridiculous hearing a bag but yes that definitely was was very much true for me wow wow what comes to me now is the question like did you enjoy sex at all in that in that <laughs> container like <laughs> was there a reason to do it <laughs> well let's say after going through those initial moments there were some breakthrough moments when the body literally just takes over and your body just doesn't allow the mind to have any control anymore there is a moment in time when that happens hmm. but it's getting to that place consistently and being able to live there is when you can actually receive the nourishment of it. Because otherwise it becomes such a challenge, such a hurdle every time you wanna drop into that place that you even forget the nourishment that you receive in that free flow of being there. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? Well, I'm hearing, I'm hearing that you didn't enjoy it until you could break break through the barrier of thinking about what was going on mm -hmm. so how how often was that occurring did that happen every time i mean i don't remember the details of that and there's a part of me that's like every time what we talking about every time i don't know about every time but i feel okay. like i feel like the the amount that it was experienced was not enough for the overall experience of being rela in relationship to be seen as something nourishing. So I'm hearing it wasn't really worth all the stress of preparations and having things right. You didn't get enough from having sex for all of that process, for all the tea to go through all of that process. I think it's to the fact that I didn't experience the trust. Like all of that, at the end of the day, I still didn't trust the experience. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? You didn't trust? Like the experience of like whatever little bit of nourishment that I might've received in the moment it wasn't enough for me to trust that moment as something that was nourishing because there were still walls preventing me from being able to see and experience it. Mm. It, it. It's like when you experience something in your dream realm and you see it for a moment, like you still are like, it's still a dream realm. It's not reality. It's not true. So you forget it when you wake up the next morning. Cause you're like, I don't live here. This isn't my lived experience day to day. Hmm. Yeah, I get the impression of like a visitor, like you went on vacation for a day and you go back to normal life. Exactly. That really speaks on something really important here. And I, and I, and I want to check if you guys are still here with us, like, right? Like, isn't that, isn't that true? Like, do you experience that too? Where it's like, if you go on vacation somewhere for a day, do you believe that this is your life now? <laughs> is that Or do you recognize it as like, that was a great vacation. That was a great, that was a great escape, a great getaway for the day. Now back to the normal, back, back to, to business. The program. <laughs> <laughs> back to your regular programming. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and that's what it was for me. And, you know, and then you forget about that vacation that happened two weeks ago or whatever last year, because that was that vacation time. That's not real life time. So that's what it was like for me in these in these moments, in the contents we were just talking about context we were just talking about with sexual like where yeah when you're in your body and you know the mind lets go for a moment and the, and you feel good in the body for that like split second or two however long it is it doesn't matter because tomorrow the next day that was just a great vacation for the moment, it wasn't real life anymore it's not like I was walking the streets being like 
yes, I can be in my body and I can be free again. There was still that planning and meticulous, um, like analyzing that was happening. Um, that was really me being, unaf being afraid of letting my guard down. Hmm. So you're saying that throughout all of the, like, the regular life, regular program, was you in a state of guard? You were guarded? Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, mm. I know some of you guys are joining in now, and I highly recommend you watching the replay because I really went to the beginning. I went through the beginning of why this is, but just touching on it quickly. My whole life was about appointments and taking care of my external hair, makeup, skin, everything. All of my attention was on the outside because I didn't want you to see what was beneath the surface. I wanted you to see what I allowed you to see. And that's it. And then that felt like taking care of myself. That felt like, yes, you know, getting myself together. But really, <laughs> hmm. I didn't want you to see me. Hmm. Because that was scary. Because I couldn't fully see myself. It's guardedness being disguised as self-care. Surface self-care. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, when, when I hear guardedness, like I think of the term like on guard. Like it's a duel. Like you're protecting something or fighting for your honor or like you're 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 in a fight mm. you're guarding something and you're and you're willing to fight to guard it mm. does that experience like fit with what what we were talking about no i didn't experience it like that so what is being on guard experience like at the root of it being on guard the experience is if I let you see this part of me you won't love me So if I'm going to let you see something, I better make it be good. I better make it perfect. I better make it flawless. So that you have no reason not to love me. Yeah. Hmm. And what I've learned about that is that what your partner really wants are all of those parts that you're hiding. <laughs> they don't want the finished product. There's nothing to do with that. They want the messy because they want to create with that, with you. They want the raw material. And that to me was the hardest, was the most challenging lesson to learn of like, can I show up in the raw and the messy and the unprocessed, unfinished, unprimed? Because I thought that was unwanted. So that hard power that I was wielding that was keeping up those walls was always the thing in between me and relationships. Because I thought I needed to be pristine, prepped, prepared. And the relationship wanted me to be raw, 
authentic like <laughs> everything that the hard wall was telling me was not safe to be in my i can really vouch for all of that right now because as you were just talking about it my mind like went back and envisioned like all of the women that i had ever seen like in bars and stuff you know wherever wherever people gather in their in their youth <laughs> or whatever to meet to meet other singles and the women that were like the most done up like like looking like dolls like perfect makeup like all of the extravagance the eyelashes and long hair and straight and perfect perfect like sexy you know like like a uh, magazine sexy looking i would never approach a woman like that even though like my eyes with my eyes i could see like that person is magazine sexy but i would never ever approach that woman and i never did To me, it, I, I could describe it as a, a sense of like intimidation maybe, but it's really, there's really like, I don't see a way in. I don't see, I don't see any welcoming. I'm, I'm not attracted to, to try, to, to approach, to make contact. Like there's, there's, there is a repulsion happening. For, for me that was that has been my experience of that like if you are so made up that i don't i can't i can't see the real thing and that's the external look of what that is but i think you know also what's happening there is there is there is a energetic guardedness mm -hmm. where i'm like if i'm coming in there i'm like I don't want to feel like I'm approaching as a conquering force. Like I'm going to be resisted and fought like to have a conversation, to try and connect. There was, I'm not interested in fighting for connection. Not like that, not in opposition. This really reminds me of what it was like for me, you know, when I would go out and be all made up, all dolled up and have nobody approach me. And I'd always say, oh, you know, I'm just too intimidating. You know, they're just not man enough or they're not good enough. That's why they, they don't have the courage to approach me. So hearing, hearing this, it's just like, yeah, that's, that's what's happening on the reciprocal end of when we are just in our hard power we're in this hard power we create this like wall around us and we end up being alone beautifully alone <laughs> yeah. and that's not enough i'm sure many of you are noticing now like that it just isn't enough it isn't fulfilling it isn't what we signed up for in this life we didn't sign up to be here beautifully alone, right? We want to be together. We want to feel fulfilled. We want to be seen. We want to see ourselves. And that can only happen when we let down those walls and trust that even when we're showing our most vulnerable, maybe ugly parts or whatever however we judge those parts of ourselves that we're afraid of showing like know that that is actually what is the key to fulfilling relationships that's the door that opens the possibility for that relationship to arrive and when we allow ourselves to be you know seen in the raw, seen naturally, without having to put any wall up, we start to taste and experience our authenticity. We're like, oh, like this is me. 
This is who I am and I can be loved this way. And then with that, we're like, wow, like I'm free. I'm no longer trapped in this cycle of having to prepare, having to hide, you know, having to put something on, having to premeditate every step of relationship. You get to simply be in it, inside of it and enjoy it. And I want you to have that. I've spent way too many years, as you guys heard, trying to um, manage my risk of being seen. And it isn't enough, it isn't fulfilling. It's lonely. So what do you do? What do you do to get out of that lonely, hard power state? How do you, how do you find that connection? <sighs> hey, Tiona. <laughs> how do we find that connection? Well, it really is about connecting to yourself. For me, that connection was really about getting to know myself from the inside out, taking the time to do that. And I'm gonna be sharing more about that. I don't feel like this is the time and place that I wanna really dive into. I really wanted this conversation to be about recognizing whether you are in your hard power or not. Because honestly, that's the first step. That's the most important step because that's the one you don't know. <laughs> like that's the one, it's when you don't know and you keep existing that way. When it can, that, it's like that problem that hap that's continuously happening in the background that you have no idea it's happening and you keep functioning from that place. So the intention for today's, today's chat is to just really reflect and be like, are you in your hard power? And if you want help with that, if you want help with being able to recognize whether you're in your hard power or not, I'm doing a class tomorrow, a free class tomorrow, where I'm gonna be leading you through a simple exercise where you get to feel immediately within yourself whether or not you've been in your hard power. And to me, that is the most important step. You can take that with you wherever you go. And then from there, if you wanna make a change, if you want to discover a different way of encountering, encountering the world, if you want to feel your soft power, then I have a program called Your Missing Peace, which is a three-month practicum where we're going to be exploring how you can feel confident and safe and fulfilled in your soft power and how you can bring that soft power into your relationships. So that is going to be the journey. So if you want to come join this class tomorrow, it's Sunday at 1 p.m. EST. I'll put the link. The link is actually in my bio if you want to come join that class. I'd love to experiment and play with you guys together in this realm of shedding, you know, letting go of, of the guard, letting go of the walls that really aren't serving us anymore. So if you guys have any questions, I want to leave a couple minutes if you want to just put any questions in the comments or if you're going to be joining us. <coughs> oh, Hachu, Hachu, bless you. If you're going to be joining us tomorrow, let us know. I want to celebrate and be like, yes. Yes, yes. so needed right now. Yes, exactly. It's a really good workshop. I've done it myself. <laughs> and it's immediate felt experience of hard power, soft power, you know what it feels like for you. No analysis necessary. It does not require any mind techniques. Like it is really just an experience. Mm. So you always know what that experience is. Yeah, it's a good, yeah. really good tool. <sighs> yes. All right, so just a couple more moments if any questions are coming through. Um, 
yeah, this was nice to be open and, uh, and vulnerable with you guys. For me, it was nice to even be able to see myself in this way, like even just in speaking it, new things came um, to the surface. So as you're watching this either live with us or watching the replay, like feel free to write in any realizations that you had in your relationship or your life right now as you've been watching this video. I think that it's always really um, supportive when we get to speak out or, or type out or let out our, um, our realization moments. And for others reading the comments, it's nice to have those sparks of reminders of like potential places that we can look to within ourselves. You know, we're reminded to look from those comments and those shares. So feel free to grace the space with that. All right, everyone. Well, this was such a nice way to be here on a Saturday. And um, I'm looking forward to continuing this journey with you guys tomorrow at our class. Again, the link to sign up is in the bio. And uh, for those ready to join and retrieve your missing piece, uh, I just, I'm such an experimenter and I love being in those containers where we get to really try on different themes and try on different ways of, um, seeing ourselves and experiencing ourselves in the ways that we can not only just heal, but recreate ourselves by, um, by being in physical practice, like physical practice. Like that's what a practicum is. That's why I'm calling it a practicum because we are going to be in continuous, like, physical practice i'm not going to be giving you guys theories or things to be able to like dissect and no you're going to get to feel them so being in practice spaces are my absolute favorite so ah, i look forward to jumping into that space with you guys inside of your missing piece and uh i will see you guys tomorrow all right much love everyone and thank you michael for being here and it was a pleasure yes Thank you for your questions, Michael, and thank you for this relationship. It really, if you guys haven't noticed already, this relationship has played a really important role in me um, accessing my my soft power and and getting to know what's been in the way of that. And everything that I've experienced in this relationship and my personal practice, I've, I've written down and I've created this three month journey um, to support you and provide you with the experiences um, so that you can also connect with your soft power. So, thank you. Thanks for your stories. <laughs> All right, guys. See you on the next.